Coming up next, the suburban scientist experiment goes wrong and honey, I shrunk the kids. The machine works? Do the kids know? Well, yeah, the kids know. The next movie is named Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and it tells the story of a suburban scientist played by Rick Moranis who invents a new machine that would be able to shrink things down to microscopic size if only he could get it to work. One day a neighborhood kid hits a baseball through the window and it bounces off the machine, it deflects the laser beam somehow, and suddenly the invention works all too well, shrinking both of Moranis' kids and two neighbor kids until they're smaller than an ant. They're almost invisible and they get thrown out with the garbage. So an ordinary backyard turns into a jungle for them, and life is terrifying when a bee takes two of the kids on a wild ride. One of the movie's best sight gags is when Moranis almost eats his own son for breakfast. As you can see from those clips, the special effects in this movie are really well done. The movie essentially takes us to the same world as such films as The Incredible Shrinky Man, which came out in 1957. And so you can see that movie special effects have made a lot of progress since then. This movie demonstrates that. The blades of grass look like palm trees. There's a friendly ant that looks amazingly realistic and so forth. Unfortunately, the movie's storytelling ability is not the equal of the special effects. For me, this is the same problem as with Batman. There's not much of a sense of fun in Honey, I Shrunk the Kid. It's not enough silliness and wild imagination. And when they do get a good idea, like having Moranis suspend himself above the backyard to circle around looking for the kids, they let it run on so long we get tired of it. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids looks good, but it's a disappointment. I don't even know if it looks good. For me, uh, it, it came out of that uh, old white bread uh, uh, environment of the old Disney live action films, which I thought was quite boring, and I started to see it come back in this way. The people didn't seem to me to be very... Uh, bright mm -hmm. for kids. I mean, I would have thought that they, if they had been put, placed in this actual situation, that the dialogue between the kids would have been a lot sharper mm -hmm. and smarter. Mm -hmm. For example, they're mowing the, the kids are now real tiny, right? They're in the grass. They're mowing the lawn. All right. Now they're running away from the lawnmower. Well, once the lawnmower passes you, it would seem logical to me that you say, hey, look, the grass is cut. Let's go there now and we can walk more quickly mm -hmm, mm -hmm, across. Mm -hmm. There isn't that kind of interchange. Kids are that smart. You know, you're right, Gene, and on a larger level, they don't have any master plan. Like, here we are, what can we do? Right. I mean, but that's what kids would once, do. Yeah, once they're in the grass, they just walk around and adventures happen to them so that they're not trying to figure out uh, what they can do to save themselves. And, and, and kids in the audience for whom this film is intended, I'm not just saying this as an adult, I'm saying if kids are that sharp, they will be figuring out what they would do in that situation. This thing needed to be written with a much brighter cast of characters. I think you're right. One more thing we ought to mention is that in its current release around the country, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, is being accompanied by a color cartoon named Tummy Trouble. Now that shouldn't be news. In the old days there was always a cartoon before the feature, but that was back before Greed took over and they wanted to, they didn't want to let you have that extra six minutes, you know, get you out there and sell you some more popcorn and get you in again. No, nothing that you haven't actually paid for could possibly be shown to you. <laughs> Tummy Trouble is a return engagement for last summer's animated hero, Roger Rabbit, who once again is assigned to babysit for baby Herman and panics when the little toddler swallows a rattle. The trip to the hospital turns into a nightmare, but the cartoon is basically just a retread of the Roger Rabbit cartoon which opened Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It's fun. I was glad to see it, but it's not worth the trip all by itself. Well, no, I wouldn't pay a full admission to see a seven-minute cartoon, but that isn't an, an indictment of the cartoon no, as no. much as, as a physical fact that it's only seven minutes long. I, I enjoyed it. I wish there were more of them. The amount of attention that we have to spend on it is dictated by the fact that it is unusual to have a, a single cartoon there. I, I loved it. I'd like to see it again. I loved it when he goes racing through the hospital wings and the doors start flapping open. And just recall the, what I loved about you cartoons know, in the first place. Gene, I just got a, a news release that they're going to make some new Tom and Jerry cartoons. Right. And Tom and Jerry are going to talk this time. 
Now that to me is no. a demonstration of complete bankruptcy. Yeah. The whole fact, the whole funny thing about these cartoons was that they were sound effects right. and uh, and mine. Other and also other wor and, and therefore otherworldly. So yes. it took you into a whole other realm than uh, normal movies. But wouldn't it be great if they just showed a cartoon before every movie that's made for a family audience anyway? Because of there are thousands would. of them in existence. They don't even have to go make any more. Coming up next.